Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about the NeoFlow uh, vision system that was developed by uh, Purdue University, ELAP Group, and uh, Jan Lecun's group, and Clement Farabe at NYU. So this is uh, an effort to um, model the visual system in, uh, in hardware um, and uh, try to replicate uh, human capability of the visual systems uh, in an efficient hardware platform. So we talked a lot about um, uh, convolutional neural network in the context of this class. Um, the principles are basically um, the idea is to have convolutional neural networks which can process an input image uh, and try to identify the categories uh, of objects present in the image. Uh, for example, um, by doing successive approximation of uh, a filtering operation and subsampling operation, and, and these filtering operations are based on largely based on convolution uh, that require a nar large number of uh, multiply and accumulate unit. So this model is very uh, interesting because it has a homogeneous architecture and just a minimal set of operation is sufficient to compute it. Uh, it's amenable to hardware because this model is intrinsically parallel. So there are hidden units that can be used to compute, can be computed by thousands of uh, smaller processor could be even asynchronous. Um, inference using this convolutional neural network, meaning I have an image, what kind of categories does it have? So turning the image into some kind of a text, um, it's mostly fit forward. And as such, it's deterministic in time, meaning we get image at a fixed uh, amount of time. Uh, the processing, because it's sort of uniform, takes about the same time, hold it. And even if we cannot run uh, 30 frames per second, we can run at uh, 10 frames per second, or 5 frames per second, or 100 frames per second, depending on the application and the size of the neural network. Uh, this model also, because it's based on the neural network, can accommodate um, low numeric precision. Um, and uh, the amount of precision that is required by this network um, for a given task has to be evaluated from one application to the other. But in general, um, we don't need architecture with 64 bits or 32 bits um, to, um, to be able to do this. So this is good because low number of bits can be implemented efficiently in uh, FPGA hardware. So, um, you know, what's the, what's happening in the brain? The brain, most of this, this area is devoted to, to vision. And uh, if we were to write some software for it, the software written for the brain executes on a lot of uh, brain processing units, which we might call neurons and each one of them is connected to several thousand other neurons. Uh, in a brain there's no flow control, meaning you know there's no it's running a program, a fixed computation and so forth. Information flows from one neuron to another as needed and uh, you don't really waste circuitry in uh, fetching, decoding, caching, and executing code uh, as is done in uh, most common hardware. So what is uh, NeoFlow right now? The NeoFlow is uh, a data flow processor architecture that is running on a standard FPGA. So if you wanted to implement this large model of uh, neural network right now, you would have a few options. I mean, most of the cheap and available options are, one, you run it on your laptop, like we've been doing in class, running neural network algorithms. Um, 
these these are general purpose processor the one in your laptop they are supposed to you know are able to run a variety of software or different with a different precision and so forth um, up to 64 bits or, so or more um, and they're they're used for all sort of things you know web browsing uh, uh, word processing video games uh, which are actually computational intensive and um, and also vision in your spare time. Um, you could also um, run vision system in GPUs, um, which are very very powerful machines. They have thousands of cores, um, and they can eff effectively do general purpose computing, scientific computing mostly, at high precision. So you know, 32, 64 bits, and um, um, at the expense of power, they use a fairly large amount of power um, in the order of a few hundred watts, and they require a separate computer. So they're not really as portable as the system that I show you here. Uh, the other option that you have is to run, uh, run it on FPGA. So FPGAs are field programmable gate arrays, and they are a programmable device uh, made by Xilinx, for example, this is an a Xilinx FPGA. What you can do with this device, you can uh, basically implement any kind of software or hardware, hardware com that you would like to have. The great thing about uh, these devices is that nowadays they come with a very large number of multiply and accumulate units, which are extremely good for being able to implement convolutional kernel correlations and so forth. So, and a lot of these operations, like um, convolution and subsampling, again done with convolutions, um, is the main operation that is done in these convolution neural networks. The also, the, the, the advantage of these devices is that they can be programmed, so you don't really need to design a separate chip, um, but you have this pro semi-programmable hardware. It's disadvantages, they don't run as fast as your laptop, not several gigahertz, but usually a few hundred megahertz um, in clock speed. Um, yeah, but you know, the advantages are great because you can prototype and uh, if uh, you don't like one of the circuits or you want to add some functionality, you can keep adding it without to having to wait for months and designs of a new integrated circuit. Another disadvantage is that these FPGAs cost quite a bit of money because they're large chips, large dies uh, implemented in the state-of-the-art state, state of the art technologies. Um, so they, um, they require a large amount of infrastructure, large amount of money basically. So there's um, three things that are very characteristic of our NeoFlow processor. The uh, NeoFlow is basically the system that we developed uh, between NYU and Purdue University team. Um, it's a data flow processor architecture running on standard FPGA. What does it mean, data flow? So in a standard computer, standard machine like yours, um, you've been writing code on it. You know that, for example, um, if you want to write an instruction, you know, for loop or something like this, then you need to code for the specific for loop, specify how much data you have, and so forth. This device here is that doesn't need to do that because uh, the amount of data is uh, predetermined. Instruction could, could could code it directly for the number of size, so information can can be streamed directly on the machine continuously, and uh, such is the way of uh, transmit uh, videos right now. There's a camera. The camera is collecting. You know, you would think that it's collecting frame one frame uh, per instant and transmitting the whole frame. In reality. You have a stream of pixels, you start from the top corner of the pixel, top left corner, you go down to the bottom right end, 
uh, one line by line, you send pixel by pixel. So what happens if you, if you get a camera with a serial bus, you're going to get uh, one pixel after another uh, slowly coming to um, to the processor, to your computer or processor or whatever it is. So in this case, uh, this FPGA uh, has a reduced number of fault control. We can send the data directly and get processed uh, immediately without ever stopping. Because um, of the large number of processing units inside, in larger number of multiply accumulate units, um, the grid of the neo flow, the grid, the computational grid, is basically uh, a, a, you know an array of processing unit, namely um, multiply accumulate units and other nonlinear operator that we're going to see in a little bit. And most of these units are 100% um, data driven, so data flows across configurable buses into the machine, gets operated upon and gets sent back to memory or to the outside. And this grid, this grid of processing can be implemented around time. Mm, and you can unroll algorithms in time. So basically, if you have a neural network, um, you don't have to compute it all of it in one shot as data comes in. You don't have to compute the whole neural network and send the data out, but you can uh, compute part of the network, store it in a local memory, then recompute again with this, reuse the same operation again, 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 a few times, and then spit out the results. So our approach, uh, this processor called NeoFlow, is um, basically, as I said, is a streaming, as a streaming instruction set. The streaming because uh, it continuously gets data from the outside, it keeps processing it, spitting it out. Allows microscopic operation, like 2D convolution, contrast normalization, and so forth. Even so implements complex instruction uh, and can be programmed with. Uh, you know, a simple API it could be C++, in this case, in our case, is Lua, C++. Mm -hmm. But really, um, building compilers from different languages is possible and is implemented on a PGA. Uh, so this is basically a specialized uh, GPU, general purpose processor, graphic processor uh, for vision, for this, um, intended for algorithms that have a large content of convolutions is mostly, you know, really image-based uh, convolution algorithms. So this is what, um, this is the inside of the NeoFlow processor. Uh, you have a reconfigurable data flow architecture. As you can see over here, you have a grid of uh, processing tiles. Uh, each one is connected through a global data lines to a smart DMA, a DMA uh, memory access controller that controls how the data flows from the memory into this and back to the memory. The memory is a DDR3 a memory, one of the fastest memory available right now. Uh, there's also a reconfigurable bus that uh, uh, controlled by, by a CPU, 64-bit CPU that controls the the entire grid to perform a selected operation. To get more idea about this grid, here's uh, we have uh, the main component are basically some kind of a RISC CPU that uh, reconfigures the grid. So and is involved with the simple operations and it's a fully functional CPU, but not as complex uh, pipeline as other ones. And the, the main idea is to hack basically as a configuration for the, for this grid, uh, supervise operation and in real time. Um, there's a, there's a grid of passive processing tiles, meaning they don't decide when data is processed, the data is configured, you know, their operation is configured by the CPU. There's a multi-port memory controller DMA that gets data from a DDR memory and uh, 
is sent back. So there are 12 memory ports on uh, one of these devices that we have, uh, one of these silence devices, the 240T. And there are 20 of these processing tiles in uh, the same architecture. And this processing tile can have different, uh, different things. For example, they can have uh, multipliers, array multipliers, they can have uh, headers, they can have nonlinear functions, nonlinear mapping, they have a uh, small memory, um, they have uh, you know, multiplier community array, deep, deep, they can divide and so forth. So the processing tile structure is basically the workhorse of, uh, of the entire uh, system here. And what he has is that he has a reconfigurable router to stream data in and out of the neighbors. So here, for example, we, you know, we can send the data to any grid to do one operation, then we can send the output to another operation or in parallel to multiple things to, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example in a little bit, but basically there's a multiplexer that sends the, gets the data in and out and sends it to, to the neighbors, you know, top and bottom and so forth. There's 20 of these routers because there's 20 processing tiles. Uh, there are mm, termite term streaming operators, so multiply, divide, add, subtract. There's say, eight of them, two per tile. Uh, there are full 2D parallel convolver with uh, 100 MAC units, so there are 10 by 10 Convolver or a hundred Mac convolver, depending whether you want to configure the one D or two D. Um, there's a configurable bank of uh, FIFO that buffer the stream of up to ten kilo kilobyte per processing tile. If you want, to, if you need to do that, the reconfigurable piecewise linear quadratic mappers available, there's four, four of them. This is all on a Verte 6 LX240 T, which is uh, the main board that we've been uh, experimenting on so far. So this is uh, one of the example of the NeoFlow processor, for example, if you wanna, you can have data, you have an image, you wanna send this image and you want to compute, you want to uh, multiply, um, the image by a fixed uh, value, a fixed gain, and then pass it through non-linearity. Just uh, similar to what you do, the main basic operation that you do in an um, artificial neural network. Multiply by weight, for example, and then add, pass through non-linearity. So what you can do is you have um, an image, a stream of pixels, one at a time, goes in, passes through this multiplexer, and um, multiply by a certain constant and you send out the result to the next multiplexer, you pass from the non-linearity and you send back the result to EMA which sends them back to memory. Basically that's the main idea. Um, a more complicated um, example is an example where we have, um, we produce um, a two by three um, array of um, Mac operations the thing and add it together and send to non-linearity. So we have the same stream of pixel number one coming in in two rows. Um, they do multiply accumulate in here. The result is uh, then sent out to do uh, on the second pixel another the second line another multiply accumulate and the result is then sent to um, a third row that's multiply accumulate as you can see the, the two results then are combined from these two multiplexer the data coming in here and coming from here is sent to another multiplexer that for example has these two streams together from one line and another uh, the two streams are then sent to a non-linearity and then this is sent back so this is one of the uh, basically atomic operation that is uh, performed by um, convolutional neural network at all times. What, uh, most of the magic mm, on this uh, largely parallel system occurs in, uh, in the convolutional operations. Uh, in this uh, 
you know, the, form, the formula for a convolution is basically this. Uh, you multiply a certain uh, mat small matrix array for the entire big matrix, and you had a certain um, weight function, for example, certain bias. Mm. So um, the way this is done in this machine is because it's a, it's a flowing machine. You don't want the data to be read you want to operate on every pixel that comes into the machine. Do all the operation you need to do on that pixel before you send it back out. So um, you can think of this this operation here, this double um, sum over all these products. Basically, you have to do uh, n by n products that involve a specific pixel. Um, so instead of changing pixel all the time and uh, what you do is uh, you have an input stream of pixels, and these pixels are going through all the all the multiplication that they need to do. This weight m and n, so this is m and this is n. For example, in this case, three by three. So the input stream comes in into every single one of this uh, this array. This array was initialized with by you know of course a stream k for example of uh, of weights, so all the weights are streamed in to begin with uh, to set a, a particular convolution that you want to do with the specific weights, and then the image, which is large compared to uh, the little uh, convolutional matrix, this, you know, an image could be 512 by 512, uh, this convolver could be up to 10 by 10 in our architecture. But this is a lot smaller, it gets configured, and then every pixel gets sent to every single multiply accumulate. So every pixel gets multiplied by the weight um, immediately. Then it gets delayed by a clock cycle and then added. You know, so you you're starting to do these additions here. Um, then again, it gets delayed to uh, while another pixel comes in and gets operated upon. So after three clock cycles here, you're going to have the product of uh, pixel 1, 2, and 3 coming out of here. At this point, these pixels are uh, delayed uh, um, an amount that is proportional basically by the size of uh, wx minus wk, so the size of the, uh, the x in the image minus the size of x in the kernel. Uh, it gets delayed by that amount and then fed back to uh, the second line again to recreate this product basically. And you repeat this process over here. Uh, you delay this by the almost the entire uh, size of the. That's why we need a lot of um, FIFOs in this architecture because you're trying to delay um, a line by almost as big amount almost as big as the image itself so you know 512 uh, and that's 10 this this number would be uh, five, 500 pixels 500 delays after 500 uh, clock cycles then you send it back in here it gets added to the next lines and then after another 500 it gets added to this but what happens at the end is that uh, and you can add another stream of pixels here. If you, you want to add two maps, one is convolved and another one that was convolved somewhere else, you can do that. And um, what happens is that a stream of pixel, you know, a large uh, matrix comes in, and then after all these delays combined, you know, so 500 plus 500 uh, uh, plus 3, 3, 3, you know, 500 and 12, 10 or something like this, after that amount, um, pixels start to come out. Um, convolved and added, and you can send this to another module to do other operations and so forth. So this is really the um, pipeline convolver architecture, which is a fairly well-known architecture, but it's used all over to operate. The idea is to operate on every pixel as it comes in, so you don't need to stream uh, data in and out from the memory, which takes a long time. And you take advantage of the parallelism by doing all the operation on the specific pixel in parallel in a single, single shot. Uh, there's also um, a DMA um, management uh, block 
that deals with uh, memory access. Uh, and here is basically to try to uh, reconfigure, you know, the user space. The user space thinks of an image as a two-day matrix, as uh, the user space, the space in in memory, uh, where convolution neural networks are multiple maps that have to be um, stored in memory, one by one, uh, maybe linear, you know, linearly, and um, the DMA does this conversion between basically user space and memory, the actual physical memory, how it's mapped. He also configures multiple channels and arbitrates them. So if, uh, if an image has to stream and needs to be computed, um, there's a MOOC arbiter here that tries to be fair and allows certain time from one stream to be computed, a second stream to be computed, and so forth. Um, and if the memory bandwidth allows, it feeds multiple streams, uh, as many as possible. Mm. And Baron will be able to tell you even more details about uh, this block uh, by stopping the lecture at this point and um, uh, discussing with you guys and then continuing. The last step that I'm interested in, in covering in uh, today's lecture is uh, the instruction set for the NeoFlow processor. Uh, these instructions are uh, basically show you the power of this machine in uh, computing, um, in you know, simplifying basically the code execution. So if you have you know, um, a sequential uh, for loop operation, what happens is that um, you have a for loop operation, for example, you have to copy a, s a single variable into one from one node into the next. Um, so this is your Lua or C++ code. In the flow control machine language, what you have to do is you have to set a register pointer for this variable i that counts how many times you're going to do this. Then there's going to be a pointer for a and a pointer for b. So there will be two pointers, and then there's uh, you're going to have to read uh, one of the value and then write one of the value. Then you're going to have to increment one of the registers, and you have to keep this register and uh, and uh, and check the limits. And you have to repeat this uh, um, basically multiple times. So uh, what you want to do one instruction a hundred times, what you end up doing is you end up doing uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight instruction and repeating five continuously. So you're doing five, let's say five instruction, six instruction, hundred times when you really wanted to do just this thing 100 times. Instead, in our flow-based CPU, what you do is you set a pointer for you know, the first variable, a pointer for the second variable, and then you just say stream one variable into another 100 times. So uh, basically, the, the number, the size of the variable, the stream, is encoded in the instruction. And then this instruction uh, operates. So you end up doing 100 and instruction when you want it to do 100 as opposed to 500 or 6 or more. Mm. This is what the same thing that you would do, um, uh, the same code that we said in a sequential. If you had a SIM processor, like most of our computers right now are SIM processor, uh, then uh, instead of doing 100 times, you do it, for example, in a 4 core, you can do four operation in parallels and then you have to try to to combine the results so there's a little bit of overhead but you could reduce this number you know instead of doing this 500 you could do it a hundred times you know a hundred and something times there's always an overhead anyway i think this example makes it fairly clear that um if you have a single core machine because you have to try to also, you don't really do one operation every clock cycle. Every clock cycle, you have to do all this following operation in parallel, decode and fetch and so forth. Um, when you already know that you're going to do this, for us, you know that you're going to do that operation multiple times, so you don't have to decode, fetch again. Um, 
Uh, there's a compiler that has been uh, developed by uh, the eLab. Uh, this is a custom machine that by the eLab and NYU, basically. This, this is a custom machine that we developed. And you want to uh, try to ha you have some code running in Lua, for example, or C++ or MATLAB. And you want to turn this code into code that executes in this machine. So this kind of code right here that I showed. Uh, well, you're going to need a special compiler because uh, this is a custom machine. So that's, that's what we did. Um, we designed a special compiler that takes um, Torch, uh, Convolution Neural Network Package, uh, developed by Ronan Robert uh, in particular, and, uh, and used it to uh, compile a NeoFlow bytecode that they can be used to, to run demonstration, as you can see in several videos on the internet and on our website. So the first thing is that you that you do is, for example, you have uh, Lua code. This is Torch Seven code, um, um, recently developed by uh, Ronan Colobert and uh, uh, Clement Farabe, uh, which is a really nice uh, package to simplify neural networks. So when I create a neural network sequential uh, convention, you can create uh, you start you start like this to create a sequential neural network. You can add a special convolution layer, uh, you know, that has three input, six output of uh, nine by nine, for example. Uh, you can have a hyperbolic tangent after this layer. You can add a special subsampling, so the six maps get turned into uh, divided by uh, four in x and y dimension. What you do is you basically do a convolution over a four by four array and you substitute it with the average value. Um, you can add a second special convolution, you know, this time from 6 uh, maps to 12, all 9 by 9. And then you can have a special classifier uh, that takes uh, uh, these 12, um, 12 outputs uh, and combines them into, for example, six, uh, possible, uh, 6 possible outputs and so forth, 6 possible categories. Um, so the code is, you know, it's very nice, it's, it's simple to, to create a neural network uh, very quickly. A scripting language that also fast enough. Um, and we'll talk more about this later in class, and you guys had, had exposure to both Torch and Lua. Um, so Lua Flow, what it does is, uh, you know, this, uh, this kind of operation, if you want to see it into, into a graph, uh, basically mm, you have maps so here we represent the data nodes right uh, this convolution are um, compute nodes so i have uh, an rgb map or a yuv image coming in um, these maps uh, are then processed on you know you want to do six filters for example as the example that we showed uh, over here six filters uh, convolutional filters uh, so you convolve these three things together, they have three inputs, um, and you get an output map. Uh, these output maps are then uh, pooled, so you subsample them by four, for example, you go, go for nonlinearity. Uh, and you have another convolutional layer. So you have uh, six by you know, 12 layers that produce a map, then you can have a small classifier layer, which uh, go for an combines the input, go for an hyperbolic tangent and gives you an output. So you have a graph like this, a flow graph of how the data goes in and uh, is sent out. Uh, so what you do, in, you know, if you want to, you can unroll this algorithm, you can up, probably cannot you don't have enough cores or processing power to do this with this thing in a single shot. So what you do is you divide it into into groups. You know you can do uh, this is step one, and you use all your convolvers. Uh, you need the six of them. Then you do another six, uh, and you do another six. Uh, and then after you convolve, you can uh, pass from nonlinearity and do the pooling, and then save into memory. Then you pass do step two, and you set to memory, then you do set three and say to memory. And what you can do is you can get the data from, from this tree and start computing 
the six convolution again in another step and so forth you have another uh, up to 16 steps and you can run this uh, classifier here on another two steps um, eight thermal steps so what you do is in order to do one particular step for example you're taking taking some inputs here like we we showed take you know four inputs to some kind of computation convolution add them all together pass through nonlinearity um, we see exactly what we've done before so we have a, a stream uh, four you know four streams coming in same stream of images coming in you want to do four filters in parallel for example you send this whole thing to nine by nine convolver right all of these guys uh, compute 9 by 9 convolver and then they send them here and at the end you have basically um, three streams four streams as an output uh, coming into um, an addition these four streams come into an addition can add it all together you add them all together and then you can send uh, the result through a nonlinear module and then send back the result back. So this we create this sort of passive but it gets configured and there's FIFOs everywhere uh, in every one of the sports uh, so that you can synchronize uh, the data um, that needs to be delayed for uh, synchronizing how you combine all these things together. Um, so there's a little bit of com configuration also. What you want to do is, you know, instead of uh, computing, configure, configuring, and then streaming, computing, configuring, streaming, computing, you can basically um, overlap the configuration. You to use to pre-cache pre the configuration so you can, while you're doing the first operation, you can start uh, changing. Uh, the operation on the grid slowly, so the grid is immediately available after that, and you can reduce the number of, uh, you know, the amount of time. This old machine NeoFlow was developed on uh, uh, 16 fixed point bits, coded on 8.8, .8, so 8 the Mantissa, and this is the exponent. Sorry. No, but this is one of my this is a uh, number of uh, um, above zero and after zero. Uh, the number of operations that are supported by this is 1D convolution, 2D convolutions, local pooling, which is some kind of a convolution, so sampling, aristogramming, max average weighted. You can do term a term, divide, uh, subtract, multiply, point wise, those linear mapping local contrast normalization do temporal difference subtract to frames and basically you're trying to extend this this to uh, provide most of the operators that are needed by general purpose computer so the results um, that you can see here uh, from um, from neoflow are basically you know comparing neoflow to your uh, processor or uh, your laptop or GPU or the fanciest GPU out there. So you can see that uh, you know, NeoFlow and Vertex 6, the one that we have right now, fixed the 16 bits. If you do floating point, 32 bits on these other machines, so you're getting you know, a little bit better result, I guess, you know, in terms of precision. But mm, you know, your uh, Intel high core doesn't have a huge amount of gig operation per second. And also because of this, uh, because it's a flow control machine, you lose a lot of cycles doing other things. So you actually, the actual performance is basically 12 on a neural network. Uh, so you can obtain maybe 14 frames per second uh, doing this operation, and you're wasting 50 watts, right? Uh, with an NVIDIA uh, board, uh, you waste a little bit more. You have uh, about the same power as our machine, but again, because it's you have to comp decode all the instructions so forth, you get about a quarter of, uh, of that available to you. But because we're a streaming processor and we know have flow control, all the pixels are operated upon as fast as possible, then we get very close to the theoretical maximum. Um, 
And um, uh, if you look at the largest uh, GPU in what uh, the equivalent of this uh, this circuit multiplied by four for a, for a, um, this is an FPGA. This is on a custom processor. Um, we could get basically with a custom processor consume only five watts, so about almost a hundred times, fifty times less than than uh, than a GPU. We could get about four times their performance, and that's what we are basically designing right now. So as a result, you know, this is a state-of-the-art architecture for vision processing. It's fully programmable. It's customized for neural network as an extendable to any state-of-the-art algorithms and is scalable to larger networks and application. And uh, there's a lot of work that we have to do. And uh, if you are following this class, you're going to be part of it.